This is the MT Predictor Weekly Market Update for December 15th, so middle of the last month of the year. Uh, like I said last week, uh, it's it just seems like it's gone by so fast here. Uh, big week next week. We've got the uh, FOMC meeting. Uh, begins on Tuesday with the announcement on interest rates, uh, 2 o'clock Eastern Time. Um, and uh, the FOMC forecasts. After that, with the press conference, all that's uh, lined up on Wednesday, and then it is a options expiration week. It's in fact it's quadruple witching, uh, which uh, you know can be an interesting week here. Uh, obviously, the normal economic data coming out all week, uh, and then we've got this Hindenburg omen that's been confirmed and had another appearance uh, last week. And so that's out there, which again uh, puts the chances of a a correction uh, of about 75 percent. Well, we've seen the market has already begun to correct, uh, and the crash normally on any given day uh, there's a less than one percent chance that the market would crash. And when you've got a Hindenburg omen, that puts that percentage up to 25 percent thereabouts. So. We've got about a 25% that we, we are actually going to get a market crash here. And that goes out, uh, I believe, you know, after right around March now. So, um, you know, all these things kind of coming together. Uh, I've got the NQ up here. I'll look at this first this week. I'm just going to uh, show the Elliott Wave pattern here. Remember, we've gone five waves up here now. We've had some red sellers candle, but you, you see they've never broken yet the uh, the bottom of any of these red sellers candles in the uh, wave 5 the maximum wave 5 zone here and uh, we've closed the week with the red sellers candle we do have a high volume spike that came in so we'll have to see uh, if we get confirmation that uh, maybe in fact professional selling in here we know the market internals are, are weakening up here with the, the Hindenburg Omen that's what that's all about and uh, so we'll see um, if they take out the low of this red sellers candle uh, this coming week and the low being uh, what is that low uh, 34 45 and a quarter that's on the uh, the new contract the uh, March contract then uh, we should see continued follow through to the downside there uh, let's let's go to the ES. That's usually what we uh, are focusing on here. Again, here's the weekly chart. Let me go up to the monthly chart. I'm just kind of step through the process here. Uh, you can see some of the analysis on there already. But here's that prior swing high. We take our decision point tool. This gives us a level of major resistance, and you see we are in that level, and that's why we anticipated ahead of time that if the market came up into this area that it should begin a correction uh, for some reason and the other point last week I gave you the 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 number 181250 and I said if they take 181250 out to the upside then we should get a rally right into Christmas they weren't able to do that and instead we sold off last week you can see the red sellers candle we had sellers overcoming buyers so um, then you know we should w would begin the correction into uh, uh, rather than the rally into Christmas. So um, they still would now have to take out uh, the lows here on this. Uh, well, let's go to the let's go to the weekly chart here. Let's go back to the weekly chart. That was the monthly chart. Uh, so here, you know, we had a red seller's candle here. Now we had a high volume spike come in on this red seller's candle. And so we're going to see if they take out the low here, we should get more follow through to the downside. And that low is uh, 1765.50. And so we'll, uh, and again, if they take that high out, that 1812.50, then right, we will see more upside. So we'll see what we get this week. Obviously with the the Fed announcement and and again don't anticipate any change in interest rates but you know the Fed speak in terms of um, quantitative easing is that going to continue uh, you know the uh, 
uh, purchasing program, that $85 billion a month, or are we going to get some type of tapering now that supposedly the economy is gaining some strength? Uh, you know, well, that's kind of all going to get sorted out here. But um, let's take a look at the the, uh, the daily chart here because there's. Uh, I'm going to remove the monthly resistance. We know we're in that. All right. Now we've got a little. Take a little decision point off of this level. So we came in some decision point support last week. After we've you know sold off a bit here. Let's see if I can drag this part down. Um, and we closed on the daily chart with a little blue buyer's candle there. Uh, so we'll see if this, in fact, acts as support and we get some rally. Maybe we get that rally into options expiration. That's a tendency about 70% of the time. All right, we'll see. And then let me look at the uh, the Dow here uh, quickly. So the Dow also, this is a correction, an ABC correction into a potential wave four. Um, if it reaches that 15,738, uh, then there's the target to the upside. If they if they don't reach that target or if they roll over and take this wave four area out, then again we anticipate more more follow through to the downside. So uh, we'll see how those shape up. And let's take a look at some uh, gold and silver. Now here's the daily chart. I think I really want to look at the weekly chart here. You see there was a little support that came in where this TS1 is. All right, if we get to 1267.60, all right, we may might get some fall through. We might get a little uh, push to the upside in in gold here. But uh, if this area, if this level gives way, then we may be able to get to our our targets here. Let me just go back and project that wave five target down here. All right, and that's uh, right around that 1168. Uh, is that minimum wave five target there? So if they can take this, you know, take this low out or get a close below this level here, we may finally be able to get to fall through into that minimum wave five. Then we'll see what things look like and see if we might get uh, some type of rally and maybe back to this wave four DP. So if we we sell off down to this level. Or it may come down to the typical wave five level here. We'll see. Uh, but one of these levels in this area, we might anticipate a rally back up into this level here. And silver. Uh, the we weekly chart here again. This was our weekly wave four. Same as a uh, gold there, anticipating a uh, move down into wave five. And let's project that again. So some of the uh, MT predictor folks are short this and have been with a stop at break even and a target about twice the initial risk there uh, in terms of the weekly signal, which was back at 2290. And that target again, 1750. Uh, so if they can take, you know, maybe get a close below uh, what maybe this it's trying to make a little swing low here. We'll see um, if they take the high out, you know, if this candle like we saw in gold, if they take this high out, we may start a little rally from here, though it may be short lived and roll over again. Eventually, I do think we're going to test this level, test the lows here. We can take a decision point off of wave three and you get another support right under the minimum wave five target there. Again, this is where you know we're talking about paper, gold, and silver. If you want to look at the physical market, you know there's a lot of other stuff going on that's telling us that uh, 
there's a lot of accumulation going on in the physical uh, s silver, gold and silver, um, especially silver. So um, it'll be interesting when we do come down to that potential bottoming, uh, tar those bottoming targets. Uh, maybe we do get that correction in the stock market with a rally in the precious metal. So we'll see how that works out. Here's the dollar index. Again, this one, those uh, nice high volume spike on the lows there. And uh, it reached the target there and it's just kind of bouncing around right in the uh, that decision point target level has been for a while. Um, you know, keeps selling off, comes into some support. And then, you know, we've got uh, buyers keep stepping in in this level here you know, trying to support it and it's hitting this level and getting rejected. So setting up a bit of a range there uh, and we'll see if this thing, it may be next week, maybe we get a break in the dollar one way or the other when we get a little more clarity from the Fed. Uh, we'll see how that goes and then we can take a look at the, let's look at the Euro US dollar here on the weekly chart. I'm going to take a decision point off of the where that TS4 was, and you see that hit that little resistance level there, uh, pulled back. It's looking to retry that level. You'll have another decision point just above there, right around uh, uh, 3885. All right, we do want to watch. Remember, we had our little five wave pattern down here. And again, it's typical that they'll correct back to the wave for DP. All right, this is this we're still kind of in that level. And if they do take this level out to the upside, right, then we're going to look at this whole five wave pattern down. And the tendency is we go back to the top of wave one, take our decision point. And if they take this level out, which I haven't been able to do yet, but if they do, then this level becomes a target. And then t the tendency is to wipe this whole five wave pattern down wipe it out to the upside and that would be right around that 4715 uh, in the euro there okay it hasn't happened yet we're still at resistance and it may just get rejected from here and we may see a pop in the dollar and the euro sell off from this area well you know we'll see but if it does take this out and uh, shoots up to the upside then obviously we'll see the dollar falling um, all right let's Let's finish up with uh, some of our option candidates because some of these uh, are in a position that time-wise that uh, will need to be closed if you haven't already taken profits. Um, Deer. All right, this one had a, a nice push. Again, some may have uh, gotten it in here or waited for the pullback and purchased uh, your options here and in this case it's uh, had a nice run there and it's uh, up about three percent from the purchase date which would have been uh, December, I'm sorry uh, October 22nd the close date now is the 19th so this week if you haven't closed it out you've got to think about uh, closing this position out and that one will be done on the 19th Let's look at U.S. Steel. This one, uh, I think, is one that we looked at uh, last week. This comes up here. Again, we had a a pattern up here, uh, one that you know uh, you could have taken profits on. This one, uh, you know, we anticipated that it was going to pull back to some extent. Now it's consolidated a bit and, and closed a little higher. Its end date. Um, is going to be December 31st. So this one goes through the end of the year. If you want to try and see if they're going to uh, rally this, uh, uh, maybe maybe make the ma maximum wave five target. It's still it's been a you know pretty good, a pretty strong one. Uh, it's up uh, about 10% from its purchase date on October 30th. Uh, let's look at Eaton. All right, the purchase date there was October 23rd. 
and this one will go into uh, December 24th is the end date but remember we had our DP um, uh, resistance here so that was a an area where you could potentially take profits uh, it's reached a the target there and then bounced I got a nice little gap up there but it's it's retraced that now we'll have to see if this area holds a support if you're going to continue to hold this you want that next run and uh, give you another target beyond this right around uh, just below 74 if they're going to rally this and uh, as of Friday's close that's up uh, almost four percent uh, we'll look at Nike. Nike was just an honorable mention. It wasn't actually part of the uh, portfolio, but some may have taken that one. And that one had a, uh, I don't know if there was a pattern here. Yeah, it was that wave five. So we anticipated that, you know, it, it did overrun these levels, but at some point you have to anticipate that it's uh, it's going to have some type of correction there, which it's had. So that runs through uh, December 26th uh, and that's now it's pulled back enough where it's only up about a uh, one or two percent there uh, again that wasn't part of the official portfolio uh, GPC is genuine parts let this one load up and this one was since we had a wave four we waited until we came into the, uh, the wave five targets here uh, before you were looking to be a buyer put a position on on this had some high volume coming in telling us that professionals were stepping in here got a nice rally off of that uh, anticipated you get a little pullback here's a DP off the wave four swing that's where we anticipated so this was a target you could be taking uh, profits there uh, this one will close on the 19th so this week if you hadn't closed it like I said this was the area to close it um, if you haven't yet then by the 19th that should be closed out and uh, as of Friday's close up about four a little over four percent Equifax this was our last one uh, we got one more honorable mention uh, Costco but uh, Equifax this one again was a good area to take profit you wave five with a decision point sell signal and you knew if you're going to stay long that you have to wait back a uh, correction back to this level if you're going to continue to hold that but that one again this was a logical year to take profit because of the closing date is the uh, 18th of December so this week that's got to be closed out as well even as of Friday's close up uh, a little better than eight percent there and then uh, if we want to just peek at Costco Again, this wasn't part of the portfolio, but if you had some extra money to throw around and you wanted to add one, uh, this one had a nice move until we reached the uh, decision point target, and now it's taken that target out. And that one closes on December 27th, so it still has more time, but you know this was kind of a logical target. Uh, let's see if there was a just an ABC there but we had a decision point so we knew there was going to be resistance there and you're going to have to wait some type of pullback now this whoops this has taken out the uh, target level and it's gone beyond so this one you know could have a lot more downside down below 110 so we'll you know keep an eye on that if you're going to continue to hold that one um, again, not part of the official portfolio, but uh, still up about 2% from its purchase date on October 25th. All right, so that's the roundup. That's the weekly market update. We'll come back, uh, let's see, next week. Yeah, we'll do another one next week, um, and then that'll probably be it as we wrap up the end of the year. So uh, good trading week. Keep in mind, options expiration week, it's quadruple witching. you got the Fed meeting in there. We've got a Hindenburg home and a lot of stuff going on heading into the year. Uh, so... Keep on your uh, toes there and we'll see you back next week.